Is Pal World the Pokemon killer we've all been waiting for? Well, in a literal sense, yes. But speaking on a wider scale, is this indie finally going to be the game to overtake Pokemon? Or at the very least, scare them enough to try a little harder? Well, that isn't such a simple answer. Let me explain. Pal World isn't the first game to hold the mantle of Pokemon killer, and I highly doubt it'll be the last, but it is the first one to break these kinds of records while doing it. In just the first three days, Pal World has sold over 4 million copies. Keep in mind, this isn't a simple free-to-play game that's taking off with everyone just deciding to download it because it's free. It's actually $30, and that isn't cheap, especially when you compare it to a lot of other indie games that hover closer to the 15 to 20 range. The fact that people are willing to pay half of a full-price AAA game for Pal World in such high numbers really does speak to the demand for a game like this. But let's take a closer look at it to really understand why this level of demand makes a fair bit of sense. Now, practically every aspect of this game is, let's say, inspired, because I really don't want to get sued, by others, but that doesn't automatically disqualify it from being popular or entertaining. Games take inspiration from other games all the time. I mean, one of my favorite series of all time, Final Fantasy, was very heavily inspired by Dragon Quest. Some of the best 2D platformers ever made like Celeste and Super Meat Boy were inspired by the early 2D Mario games, and practically the entire genre of 3D first-person shooters wouldn't exist without Wolfenstein and Doom. Inspiration is nothing new. Now, Pal World is obviously a bit more on the extreme side when it comes to inspiration, but believe it or not, that might not matter since in a strange, almost backwards way, it actually works. See, by taking so many aspects of so many different games and mashing them all together to create an odd amalgamation of different ideas, it almost develops its own identity that's greater than the sum of its parts. I think a large part of that, coincidentally, might be the same reason the game blew up the way it did. Pal World basically always says yes. You can fight the monsters with your bare hands if you want to, you can build your very own base, and you can even commit international human rights violations. Naturally, these wacky moments will easily lead to a game blowing up the way Pal World did. Moments that get clipped, shared, and inevitably lead to more sales. And I think it really is as simple as that. People were frustrated and tired of Pokemon, so they'll naturally enjoy a game like this. And outside of them, the much, much larger group of people who just like fun video games really enjoy this game because, well, it's fun. So now that we understand a bit about Pal World, will it finally be the first game to live up to the moniker of Pokemon Killer? Well... Pokemon has been a series that has mostly stagnated and developed a relatively negative reputation in recent years. Granted, I say relatively negative, because while there is a very real group of people who dislike more recent Pokemon games, the series itself is as big as it's ever been. In fact, it's nearly as big as it was during the Pokemon craze in the late 90s. Let's look at the numbers. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in its first three days became one of the fastest selling Nintendo games ever released. Despite its comical glitches, mediocre optimization, and less than stellar graphics, the game sold 10 million units in three days. And if we zoom out to the total sales, Scarlet and Violet sit at over 23 million, making them one of the most successful entries in the nearly 30-year-old franchise. If we look at the three-day sales of both of these games side by side, it's really not even close. This isn't exactly new either. Sword and Shield, a game that many fans consider to be one of the worst entries in the series, also happens to be one of the best-selling Pokemon games ever released, at a baffling 26 million sales. However, while Pokemon may totally eclipse the sales of Pal World, we really do need to consider the context of this situation. This isn't some rival studio backed by a massive company with billions to burn. It's an indie game. But even with that in mind, the answer to the initial question is pretty obvious. Pokemon is the largest media franchise on the planet, and indie games simply isn't going to beat that. They're not going to scare the Pokemon company into suddenly spending extra time and money on their already wildly successful games. But maybe that's okay. Maybe we don't need a Pokemon killer. Listen, even though Pal World probably isn't going to force Pokemon to suddenly evolve, it does provide us with its own experience. In fact, a better way to illustrate this might be by going back to my game of the year from 2023. Cassette Beasts was another game that was fundamentally pretty similar to Pokemon, but naturally, it didn't have anywhere near the level of success. To me though, that didn't really matter. I enjoyed Cassette Beasts because it provided me with an experience that addressed a lot of the problems I had with the Pokemon franchise, while also adding its own unique ideas that made it a genuine joy to play. It wasn't a Pokemon killer, but that didn't matter. 
I think not just PAL World, but other games like this are in a similar position. A Pokemon killer doesn't exist. The franchise is just too big. Maybe one day in the distant future one might show up, but honestly, who cares if it does? The point of these games isn't to beat Pokemon, it's just to provide a fun experience for the player, and I think that's exactly what they do. Pal World isn't the only surprise blockbuster this year though, because I'm willing to bet that this game right here will be 2024's first masterpiece, or at least one of them, because this year is already kinda stacked.